Hi. Today we're going to be looking at the new Miniware TS101 Soldier Iron. So this is the upgrade to the very popular TS100 Soldier Iron. And there's a few improvements on this one. First of all, it's got a new form factor, so slightly different in design to the previous version. But the more notable improvements are we've got a much larger screen on this one. We've also got two power sources, a USB-C as well as a DC jack. And the USB-C connector supports power delivery from 9 to 20 volts, giving 45 watts maximum output into one of the tips. But you can also supply it with a DC input into the DC jack from 9 to 24 volts, and that gives you a maximum of 65 watts into the soldier iron tips, which is quite a lot. That's competing now with some of the much bigger soldier irons and soldier iron stations, so it'd be interesting to see how this one performs today. So looking a bit closer at the unit, this is our new 128 by 32 pixel OLED, slightly larger form factor, and when we power it up you can see the display is really quite clear. So it's got a very familiar user interface to those who have used the Miniware devices before. Uh, we can go through the menu, so we've got various presets, so three presets that allow you to quickly change between temperature profiles. Uh, we've got the step size if you want to manually adjust the temperature, so it goes up in 10 degree steps, but you can change that. The sleep temperature, so after a certain period of time, it will drop down to a slightly lower temperature to avoid oxidizing the tips. At the moment, it's set to 180 seconds. Then we've got the idle time, which is the amount of time before it physically turns the heater off completely. Backlight, uh, that's actually the OLED brightness. And we've got the units. Uh, display direction, so if you're left-handed, you can flip the display around. Uh, boost temperature, something I don't necessarily agree with, but that's if you need to deliver a bit of extra power to overcome the thermal limitations of the soldier iron. What your power source is. Uh, minimum voltage for your lithium polymer cells. So if you're using LiPo cells, um, you can set the under voltage lockout type thing to stop it draining the batteries below a certain amount. Uh, things like PV maximum. So this is our maximum power delivery power draw from the USB-C connector. Uh, sense units, uh, the calibration and restore factory default. So pretty standard interface uh, compared to the TS100. Now, when we want to connect up a tip, we just slide it in here and there is a retaining screw that you just give a slight turn, don't try to tighten it up too far, but that just retains the tip in the soldering iron, and then we're ready to go. But there is one additional accessory that comes with this new unit. This is supposed to be a kind of finger guard. In fact, I think you have to put it in first. Uh, this is to try and stop you accidentally slipping onto the soldering iron tip. Um, so it's got a little bit of a ridge here that just stops that sliding in. But it would have been nice if that was moulded into it rather than having that quite rough feel between the handpiece and the guard. Now the unit is quite compact and really quite lightweight. The main part of the body is about 100 millimetres long, but the tips are also quite long. So it protrudes about 65, maybe 66 millimetres from the unit to the tip, which means that you are holding the soldier iron quite a long way away from the solder joint that you're trying to make. If you compare it to one of the Metcal um, solder irons, you can see there's a significant difference there between the tip to finger distance. Uh, that might not be a problem for experienced people or people who don't have any issues uh, with their hand-to-eye coordination, but a small movement on your fingers here results in quite a large movement here. So it does mean that potentially you're a bit more inaccurate with your soldering with that long distance. So these PCBs have been supplied to us by our sponsor for today's video, JLC PCB. And these are some matte black PCBs with an immersion gold finish. And these PCBs will let us compare different soldering irons and see how they perform when soldering some through-hole parts. Now you can get your own PCBs made at JLC PCB for just $2 for five PCBs up to 100 by 100 millimeters in a variety of different colors and PCB thicknesses. So don't forget to visit JLC PCB if you're thinking about getting some boards made.
That was the conical tip, so let's try a chisel tip instead. We can see it's peaking at about 35 watts. And you can see the input voltage from the power delivery AC adapter is 20 volts and we're set to 330 degrees C. So according to the instruction book, we can also power this with a DC adapter. So I've got a 24 volt DC adapter here, which should allow this to run anywhere up to 65 watts. So let's try powering this up. And if you look at the top here, we've got the instantaneous power. So let's start heating. And we'll get about 45 watts instead of the slightly lower power than that. So we're not making it all the way up to 65, but that's definitely an increase in power. Let's try putting a bit of solder onto one of these gold pads. It's just a double layer PCB, no thermal wires, so this should be fairly straightforward. We are set to 350 degrees C. It does flow quite easily, but there is a little bit of resistance there compared to some of the other soldering stations. But it does seem to melt the solder quite nicely onto that large gold pad. And most of the pad does actually stay molten there, as you can see. Let's just compare that to the Metcal CV system. And we'll start putting some heat in, but as you can see, we can just dump solder in super fast into here. Almost 90 watts into that pad, which is why it just melts so rapidly with that CV system. Again, just dump the power in and it really spreads the solder out really easily. So completely effortless with a much more powerful station. But these small compact soldering irons obviously aren't designed to compete with the likes of a very expensive Metcal station. So overall, I think it's really quite a nice soldering iron. It does work very well, but in my eyes, I think this is more geared towards portable soldering than benchtop use. So because of the various power options, I mean, it has a lot of flexibility here. We can power it from a phone charger. We can power it from a USB-C power bank. We can power it from a DC adapter. You can power it from your car. You can power it from a battery pack. Um, there's a whole variety of power options, which means that you can take this anywhere uh, where you need to do a bit of soldering and you'll be able to get some very good soldering results. But uh, a few things that I don't like, first of all it doesn't come with any kind of stand, although this finger guard does actually stop it rolling about on the bench, which is a big improvement over the TS-80 that I reviewed previously. Um, so this does actually stop it going anywhere and I think if you had a silicone mat to go underneath it, that would work quite well, but nothing is provided with it and I would much prefer anyway some kind of soldering iron holder that you can just dock it in uh, between solder joints or uh, when you finish soldering just to reduce the risk of burns. Also as I pointed out there is a slight limitation the distance between the tip to where you hold it. For beginners in particular this can create some uh, difficulties with soldering accurately. As you get more experienced uh, you don't find that too much of a trouble but uh, if this could be reduced that would really make this a much more attractive proposition. It would, and it would decrease the size of the thing. I mean, you can solder in even more confined spaces. The user interface works quite well. Um, you do need to get used to it a little bit, what button does what, but after a short period of time, it does make sense. Um, so overall, I think it's quite nice. Certainly, I'm going to take this with me if I ever need to do any repair work. Um, but on my bench, I think I'll stick to a normal soldering station just because it's designed for benchtop use. I'll put a link in the description down below if you're interested in taking a look at this item. Um, also, if you already own the TS100, the tips are compatible with it. So if you wanted to make the upgrade, 
you don't have to buy a whole new set of tips, which is quite nice. Uh, but if you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. Big thank you to our sponsor, JLC PCB. Don't forget to visit them if you want to get some PCBs made. And until next time, thanks for watching.